Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we will be recapping day seven of the NHL first round. Multiple game fours here today, and the first one was Blue Jackets versus Tampa Bay Lightning. This one was uh, a pretty uh, basically the opposite of what happened back in game two in the Blue Jackets won that game. This one was a lightning victory, and it was one where the roles were sort of reversed. Uh, the lightning would score the first and second goals of this game with Goodrow and Gord before Atkinson would cut into the lead, but there would be no more action, and the lightning would take the 2-1 victory. The reason I said the roles were reversed is that usually it's been the Columbus Blue Jackets who have been getting less opportunities but scoring more opportunistically, and it would be the lightning heavily pushing with many shots but getting sort of stonewalled by the Blue Jackets defense and the Blue Jackets goaltender but in this case it was the Lightning who had the least the less chances and it was the Lightning who were capitalizing opportunistically with Goodrow and Gord's goal and it was the Blue Jackets who were getting stonewalled by the Lightning defense and Vasilevsky so good news for the Lightning it's it's been very nice to watch the Lightning really sort of play at the level of the Blue Jackets you know, you don't normally get second tries in the NHL, but after they got swept last season, probably a lot of lessons taken to try and apply to this series. And so the Lightning knew they wouldn't be able to play a super fast style of hockey game. And so they've adapted their game to fit with the Blue Jacket style. And right now they are rewarded with a 3-1 series lead. I mean, just to take a counter example of that would probably be the Capitals versus the Islanders uh, elsewhere in the bracket. The Capitals have not really adapted their game to fit with the Islander styles, and as such, they're down 3-0 in that series. That could have been the Lightning situation if they made the same mistakes twice, but they've corrected them, and as such, they could be moving on very soon. The bad news for the Lightning is... It's not necessarily bad news, it's similar to how it was for all the other Blue Jackets games where these games are still quite close, right? So, in theory, these these games could sort of go either way, so the Lightning are absolutely not out of the woods yet, but they've been playing pretty well, and, and things are looking, I'd say, pretty bright for them. On the Blue Jackets side, it was an improved performance today based on, uh, uh, at least compared to the previous game, Game 3, which was just awful for the Blue Jackets. So at the very least, Tortorella can at least be somewhat happy with how they performed, but in the end, they ended up losing this one. Uh, I guess you could also say Corpusalo was still quite strong in this game. But otherwise, the bad news has to be is that the way these games have been going, it seems like it's really coming down to a bounce here there and at the moment the Blue Jackets are trailing 3-1 in the series and so it's seemingly unlikely that they'll be able to get three straight games with three solid bounces for themselves to get this series victory compared to the Lightning who only now need a single one to uh, to win so Blue Jackets really in a tough spot at this point. On to the next game, it was Avalanche versus Coyotes, and it was of course the Coyotes who managed to miraculously win Game 3 off the back of fantastic performance from Darcy Kemper, but here in this Game 4, the Avalanche seemingly have woken up a bit, realized that they can't take this series all too lightly, and they just light up the Coyotes with a 7-1 victory to take a 3-1 series lead and put the Coyotes on the brink of elimination. This one starts off with a Nieto goal, then Kadri, a couple of them, Don score makes it 4-0. Then it is Chikrin who tried to make it respectable, make it maybe amount to come back for the Coyotes to make it 4-1, but that would be denied by Makar, then Calvert, and then Rantanen, and a 7-1 victory. Good news for the Avalanche is basically just most things that they've managed to wake up in this series, sort of just dominating the Coyotes in this game. The offense is looking quite strong here in this one. They've found a way to really not only beat Darcy Kemper, but chase him out of the net as Antti Ranta stepped in and also let in a couple of goals in this series. So just really all things going very well for Aval uh, the Avalanche at the moment. One thing I should also mention is Philip Grubauer, the goaltender for the Avalanche, because of all the talent that they have up front, Grubauer doesn't necessarily get a lot talked about him but he has been pretty solid thus far for the avalanche in this series in the games he has played as i believe uh francis has played one of the games for the avalanche and that was game three the one they lost actually on the bad news for the avalanche honestly there really isn't much in fact the one loss that they have had in the series you could actually make the argument is a good thing for the avalanche 
Otherwise, maybe they would have too much coasted through this series and been in for a bit of a wake-up call in round two. But because they lost here, they faced this very slight but still adversity in this series. And they've had this big awakening game here in game four. I think they will be more so prepared. So honestly, it's hard to say too much bad about the Avalanche at the moment. On for the Coyotes, you know, good news, there really isn't much at this point. This is not really a game that you're going to be able to take so much good news out of. It reminds me of Game 2 between the Flyers and the Canadians when the Flyers lost 5-0. I mean, how can you really take good news out of a 7-1 loss? The Coyotes basically had no shots, no opportunities. There wasn't the saving grace of Darcy Kemper like there had been earlier on in the series. Not as though Kemper was bad per se in this game, but he wasn't heroic like he had been in the first few games. And so... It's hard to say much good, but I guess it's also hard to say too much bad about them. Obviously, everything went wrong in this game, but as we knew, the Coyotes were already multiple steps behind, multiple levels below where the Avalanche were, and the fact that they won a game in this series is probably enough to say that the Coyotes have done a decent job thus far. On to the next series, that was Hurricanes versus Bruins, and just what a crazy game this was, a massive collapse by the Carolina Hurricanes in this one. They were playing quite, or not quite well, but pretty well for the first couple of periods, playing it pretty even, I would say, and they were the team up 2-0 heading into the third period, Justin Williams and Martinuk getting the goals, and normally the Hurricanes are quite good at holding leads in the third period, especially a two-goal lead, and yet it was just an epic collapse here. DeBrus gets this first one, and that really started it because this was a pretty bad goal to have led up by the Hurricanes. James Reimer with a crucial mistake on this one and then that just leads to the Connor Clifton goal and then the Brad Marchand goal and then another Jake DeBrus goal and during this time the Bruins were just completely outplaying and out shooting the Hurricanes in fact the first shot for the Hurricanes in the third period came in the last minute and a half when they scored on Tuvotero Vinen's goal to make it 4-3 they would get one more shot in the game it would not go in this time and they'd end up losing 4-3 but just an absolutely awful third period for the Hurricanes. Good news for the Bruins is, of course, that they managed to make this massive comeback in the third period, really, really waking up and asserting their dominance over the Carolina Hurricanes. As, of course, we should recall, the Bruins managed to sweep the Hurricanes last season. 4-0 and so they were looking the Hurricanes were looking for some revenge but the Boston Bruins trying to make the point here that they are still the better team in this scenario. They won't be able to get the sweep because they did end up losing a game in this series. However, the Bruins are going to be looking to close it out in Game 5 with the 3-1 series lead. And this third period, I don't think the Hurricanes will have this poor of performance going into the next one. But it certainly does inspire hope for the Bruins moving forward. The only bad news, I have to look at Yaroslav Halak at this point. I had said after the previous game that Halak was looking very good in relief of Tuka Rask, who opted out of the playoffs, of course. And that Halak has been known to be a solid, even a very good playoff goaltender. But in this game, it wasn't great. A couple of goals he'd really want to have back. The Williams one, the Tuvo Teravainen one as well. As the third one, he would probably want to have back. So not a great game from Halak. And so it's going to be a problem. Maybe not so much in this series. We'll see how this one ends up going. But of course, as I've pointed out multiple times, as they move forward, when they face off against a team like the Lightning or like whoever else might advance, Halak is going to have to be much better than he was in this game. That's just to say the least. From the Hurricane side, you know, the good news has to be that you played a pretty solid 40 minutes, all things considered. Obviously, the big stain there will be that third period, but at this point, you really just have to forget that. It's the playoffs. You cannot linger. I've mentioned this before. You cannot linger on your own misplays, and even if these misplays were massive, you have to look more so on the positive side, which was that you put yourself in a good position to win this game, and normally, if they were to do the same thing, let's say heading into game five, they probably are able to finish it out as long as you'd like. They, they probably won't collapse again like they have done. So the Hurricanes, there is still some bright side here, but they obviously would have much, much rather have this series tied at two. On the bad news side, it, it's interesting the goaltending situation here in Carolina. They started Peter Mrazek in game one. He didn't look so hot, so they went with James Reimer in game two. The Hurricanes won that game, but then they went 
back with Mrazek for Game 3. Mrazek was solid even in the loss, and yet they went once again back to James Reimer here in Game 4, and Reimer started off well, but after giving up making this crucial mistake on the Debrus goal, he sort of just collapsed, and so... In my mind, it seems as though Peter Mrazek will almost certainly get the start for Game 5, but this bounce between these two goaltenders is probably not helping out Carolina in this series. I don't think this is like a main reason why they're trailing 3-1 at the moment, but it, it certainly plays a part in that. I wonder if, if they had gone with Reimer again in Game 3, if whether or not in Game 4 a collapse like this would have happened again. And the final game of the day was Canucks versus Blues. The Blues were looking to tie up the series after they had won in overtime in Game 3, and that's exactly what they managed to do. They had the first goal of this game from O'Reilly. Miller would tie it up for the Canucks, but then O'Reilly and Petrangelo would make it 3-1 Blues, and that would be enough to get the victory. Good news for the St. Louis Blues. They played ex exceptionally well. This was even improvement over the previous game that they had played. Their penalty kill was much improved as a... Uh, the Canucks had been, I believe, the league's best team in the playoffs thus far on the power play, and the Blues just shut them out completely, though the discipline probably needs some work in that uh, side. The Blues actually did decide to go with Jake Allen once again instead of going back with Jordan Binnington, Binnington because it was a back-to-back, -back, and that was, again, the correct choice to go with Allen. So he is seemingly taken over as the starter for the Blues, at least for the foreseeable future, until maybe he has a couple of bad games, which was something I did not see coming at the start of these playoffs. But the Blues really seem to have finally shown up. It, it took losing all three games in the round robin, and it took losing the first couple of games pretty not so great in the start of this series, but they have finally shown how they are the team that won the Stanley Cup last year. Uh, series uh, last season I should say and that the you know the Vancouver Canucks are definitely in for some trouble trying to close out this series the bad news for the St. Louis Blues you know it's hard to sort of think of bad news at this point I guess the discipline aspect that I mentioned earlier is probably a big one yes they did manage to kill off all seven power plays that the Canucks did have but it's not a good thing, as I said, to give a team that has been this lethal on the power play seven power plays in a game, even if you've managed to kill them off. So that's something that the Blues really need to look out for specifically. And of course, the fact that they are still in a situation where the series is tied at two. They probably would have wanted to be in a better position at this point, considering how they've played these past couple of games. But, you know, it's a best of three at this point. The Blues will do their best to close it out. On to the Canucks. The good news for the Vancouver Canucks is... I guess it has to be the fact that they have won at least a couple of games. And of course, Jacob Markstrom really just still fantastic for the Canucks. Really the shining light in this game that didn't go necessarily all that well for Vancouver. He was doing a very good job of making it so that this uh, game appeared a lot closer than it actually was. It probably could have been a much wider score differential in this one than the 3-1 it finished as if Markstrom hadn't been there to stop that. But uh, that really is the main positive takeout. On the negative side, the Canucks is beginning to look like the first couple of games weren't so much that the Canucks were better than the Blues, but were more so that the Blues were just not playing all that well, which is not a very good thing moving forward because it doesn't really inspire much hope for the last few games of this series. The Canucks really have to prove that they it wasn't, a, let's say... A, a situation where they just happened to find a Blues team that was not playing well through the first couple of games, and that they are, in fact, a team that is competitive in these playoffs, that is a contender, because right now, they are absolutely on the back foot here in these past couple of games. But that will do it for this recap. On to my predictions. I had said the Lightning would win in six games. Right now, they're up 3-1. This might even close out in five, but looking like a pretty solid uh, prediction thus far then for the avalanche coyotes i said the avalanche in five games and honestly this i would be shocked if it didn't end in those full five games so that one seems to be right on the nose bruins hurricanes i had gone for the hurricanes in seven games and not looking so good thus far it looks like the bruins might be able to finish it out and then in the final one i had the blues in six and honestly with how this game has gone that could very well happen when it was something i was doubting when the canucks were up 2-0 class dismissed